every year. I like to bring the guys out. We get to get together and have a little family dinner here of the DA show. And so this year we've decided on hibachi, which is very exciting for all of us. A little flip a shrimp into a hat, down the gullet, away we go. But it's been tough to try to figure out what day to do this. And Bilotti has his, his wedding coming up on the 21st. And so that kind of takes him out, wedding planning of the second half of this month. So we're looking at next week. Mraz has some producing duties on the other side, WFAN here in New York. And so it's been def- difficult to find a date. On Monday, we may end up doing this, but there's also the CBS Sports Radio holiday party, which is really like an intercom corporate-wide holiday party. So it's all the people you don't know in this building. And Mraz just checked the email of the timing of it, and I said, are they going to be serving food there? Because why do we have to, why are we going to go out for dinner after we already have company food? He said, no, it looks like there's going to be drinks and whores devours. Now, obviously, when you say this, you think it's a joke. When somebody says this, it's because we all know hors d'oeuvres is spelled weirdly, but you say it like you don't know what it is. And Bilotti, I kind of laughed because I thought Mraz obviously knew what it was. And Bilotti said, wait a second, you mean hors d'oeuvres? And Mraz said, that's how you spell hors d'oeuvres? Mraz, you're 30 or 31 now? 31. 31 years old, married for four years? That was 2014. So, four and a half. 31 years old, married for four and a half years, lives on his own, and holds both a high school and a bachelor's degree, and still does not know when he sees hors d'oeuvres in print that that's what hors d'oeuvres is. Now, I always spelled, thought it was like O-R-D-E-R-B-S. Well, look, it's hard. I agree. It's a French word. It's spelled weirdly. Stupid. Just but, call him a snack. But I, I don't understand how at 31 years old and having some basis of education, you would not know seeing that word that that's what hors d'oeuvres is. I just can't imagine you, you've gotten to this age. If you were look, f- to me, I read that. It could have been a musical act. I don't know what the hell horse devours means. Horse devours. I mean, if you were 14 years old and you had not kind of gone through life largely, I could kind of understand, oh, yeah, that's a weird-looking word. I mean, it's just, again, he's been alive for a really long time. It's hard to imagine you could be this sheltered from just general knowledge. And he's a food expert. Correct. He loves food, loves to eat, has gotten married, where they passed out hors d'oeuvres. You'd have stumbled upon this word once or twice by now. Now, Michael Cohn's on me. And I don't think that your sisters or your mother and father are as stupid as you are. No, my dad works in the food biz. I'm sure he probably knows how to spell But I just mean in general education and knowledge, they don't strike me as doofuses. I think just... I think your education huh. has been so bad. But here's the thing. And your work ethic has no, been we, so poor. I know about Abe Lincoln, so, like, I, <laughs> I mean, like, to act like I, you know, the horse devout hors d'oeuvres is, like, this big, you know, I, I understand history. No, you don't. I know the War of 1812. You, no, you don't know that, I'm sure. I know it existed. I know in 1812 there was a war. Who battled? Spanish and America. Definitely incorrect. You don't they know. They had their own war. That, that, Spain and France. <laughs> Spain and France, you think, was the War of 1812? Yes. Yeah, well, that's absolutely incorrect. You got both wrong. Okay. (laughs) Both teams that played in the War of 1812, you got wrong. Okay. Number two. I knew there was a war. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. You knew that something called the War of 1812 was a war. And that's that's what I'm saying. That's your basis. Which 1812 is it? (laughs) I'm just saying, like, you learn these things. I, you, they're not exactly in you cursive on the on the board. Show me how to write or there. But you didn't, le- you didn't learn the basics either. You thought that Columbus was the first pilgrim. Oh, well, it is a little confusing when you think when they say he settled America, but that Thanksgiving is supposed to be pilgrims and Indians coming together when they colonized America. Well, put two and two together. Who got there to make the turkey? Well, it was who freaking told Columbus. You that Columbus settled America? He found it. He discovered he it. He found it. So he found it. All of a sudden, 100 years later, now we're having Thanksgiving. It so, makes no sense. So so you don't know who made the turkey. That's your, that's, who else you would make the turkey? You know what I mean, tur- in general, like, Columbus came, he found America. I understand now that he's not a pilgrim. It doesn't make any sense to me that Thanksgiving was supposed to be the beginning of the pilgrims meeting the Indians here in America. Well, if Columbus found it, what was he? He was a pilgrim? It doesn't make any sense. And our parts of history don't make sense, and to call somebody stupid because they don't get them or question history, I think it's ridiculous. Well, why, no, does, everybody, why does everybody else get it? 
Because you guys just take everybody at their word for it. It doesn't make any sense. Well, maybe we put in some work of trying to learn and actually had synapses in our brain fire and say, well, one guy discovered America in 1492 and then... She sailed the ocean blue. Thanksgiving didn't happen for another 200 years, so it's probably not the same guy. That's a pretty big gap, wouldn't you no, say no, so? No, no, yes. no. <laughs> That's a pretty big gap. How could you not realize it's a pretty big gap that the same guy wouldn't be around 200 years later to cook the turkey, as you said? I'm look, whatever. Like, why wouldn't you think of that? Why would you think? Look, I am not trying to make it seem like I'm Albert Einstein. I got into sports radio and not technology for a reason. Well, your your basis (laughs) was. Don't forget, he started out making sandwiches. Technology. (laughs) Yeah, I have a long line of sandwich makers in my family. Well, and and (laughs) your basis is I know Abe Lincoln. I know the war of 1812. He was shot in a theater by John Wilkes Booth. These are things that a five-year-old says. Well, I know Abe Lincoln, so I'm smart. But these are the things they teach you in school. You're 31 with a full time. Yes, and you were in school. They didn't teach you hors d'oeuvres in school. I I I ate chicken nugget sandwiches for a buck 75 (laughs) on a styrofoam tray. I will defend him that hors d'oeuvres is not necessarily about his book learning. but How many fancy parties am I going to? Why did you think that they spoke Egyptian in Brazil? It wasn't that I thought that. I had to come up with a country I thought was close to Brazil because I thought you were tricking me into saying Brazilian or Spanish. And why did you think Egypt is close to Brazil? Because I thought they were on the same continent along that coast. And why did you think that? Because I, from looking at maps. <laughs> Which well, maps? If you looked at Here's a map, Here's the you... problem. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what if you looked at a map and you saw the shape of South America and the shape of Africa? You tell me they don't look similar? <laughs> you, no. Remember remember Pangea? I know about Pangea. Okay, that's what it comes from. So they split off like puzzle pieces. There's I'm only sorry. seven continents. You can't even figure out the I, seven. But I wouldn't have said Antarctica because it's a different shape. They at least look similar. <laughs> You Always call, he's in the middle. You call the Roman numeral a stripe yeah, here we are. on this show. You thought that Boise was a two-hour drive <laughs> past Cleveland. I've been to Boise now, and now I know it's not. I you learned this. You never this, stop learning. You live in a country where you thought you could drive to Boise two hours past Cleveland from New York. Cleveland would be eight hours, so how much longer to Boise? <laughs> Another two? Does this not terrify you that your basis of knowledge no, and I, your logic is a disaster? I think what happens here is now today I learn how to spell hors d'oeuvres. I learn something new every day, and isn't that special? Isn't that something to be That's said good. for that? So you, didn't <laughs> you guys all, you know, hang your fancy degrees and talk about all this stuff you, you know. You have the same we, degrees we do. You uh, have the same exact degrees. But here's degrees. the problem. You guys were done learning at 20. I'm going to learn the rest of my life. And I think there's something to be said for that. No, what? I'm yeah. serious. So your plan was my brain to is going to continue to grow two while you guys, decades. you guys are going to sit on your ass and never learn anything the rest of your life, and I'm constantly learning something new every day. No, that's, no. that's a global experience. Shut Here's down the difference. This hot dog. The difference is you're still learning the fifth grade stuff, and we're learning the <laughs> other stuff. We're way past what you're learning. Right. But I'm getting a crash course. I got everything. I got the current stuff and I got the old stuff. You got no current but stuff. But I have the in. basis. Like I know how we got here. You know what I mean? No, no you don't. don't. You don't know how we you got don't here. Know. You just stumped you on Thanksgiving. You thought Columbus was a pilgrim. I, again, I would still argue that in some way or form he had to have been, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the problem. I mean, honestly, it's just I would think it's terrifying, but you know what? I don't know. I it's don't know. It's hors d'oeuvres. Well, that's where this started with. I don't know the spelling of a, a word that sounds like an O but begins with an H well, and ends with an apostrophe. Well, what do you think they're serving at a company party? Uh, some piggies in a blanket. Okay, and what do you call those? A snack. <laughs> but or, I guess an hors d'oeuvre. Yes, exactly. So when you see that on a... It could be a musical act, as I said. <laughs> the other two things were beverages and raffle. Well, there's going to be no music at this party. <laughs> So you saw the word for hors d'oeuvres and thought it was the musical act at our company party, which, by the way, we've never had a musical act in. Yes, well, we never had a company party. Yes, yes. We, that's not true. There's an we... artist called Marshmallow. There's no W at the end. <laughs> I mean, Prince was a symbol. People spell band names a ridiculous thing. How do I know this isn't some alt-rock group from the alt station up there? You know, with an H, an apostrophe, an ORS. How do you know? I don't know. So excuse me for thinking it's music. I put that together and it made sense. Just write snacks on the damn flyer without this argument. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> the, the the three or four jumps that he has made <laughs> off facts like Columbus and Pilgrims and now hors d'oeuvres to maybe being a musical band. An alt-rock group. Those somehow are more logical yes. than us going, oh, that must be how you spell hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, right. I mean, honestly. <laughs>
What's more logical, having an alt rock band <laughs> named hors d'oeuvres yeah. or having snacks <laughs> served at the company party? <laughs> In nine fonts, in italics, <laughs> drinks and fill in band name. Oh, here. that must oh, be okay. the great alt rock group, yeah, the hors d'oeuvres. Do they have an opener? Is <laughs> drinks opening for them? <laughs> Will they go Lunch on right maybe? four? Or we have time to get there and settle in. <laughs> oh, great. Ginger ale is opening up for the hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm broken. <laughs> I'm broken. Come on. <laughs>